closing with Ted Win. Listen, how are you doing, Ted? I'm well. How are you? I'm great. Listen, listen. I have to first just tell you the single is amazing. Uh, one thing that I love about this, well, first off, Ted Wynn, if you guys have not followed him, he started with uh, Richard Smallwood some time <laughs> mm-hmm. ago, um, yep. singing with Vision with Marette Brown Clark and Sherry mm-hmm. Jones Moffat, which yeah, is some beast all in itself. But then he was in a group called uh, Ted and Sherry, which mm-hmm. uh, my favorite song was Come Ye... Uh, I'm going to mess up the console. I'm going to say the word wrong. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about. And thank you. When I tell you they are, and Rockford, we've had Sherry before. They are Mm -hmm. some singing beasts. Yes. They're some singing beasts. And now Ted Wynn has, he's recorded with so many artists, but um, now he's doing his solo thing. He's been doing Mm -hmm. it for a couple years now. And um, this this song titled Grateful, um, it's just a song that puts you in the mind of just how grateful, especially with Thanksgiving season, putting the plug in, uh, coming up. You know, it just puts you in the mind of being mm-hmm. grateful. Ted, how does it feel to have this single come out? Uh, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling uh, to think about, for me, really, the, the creative process of heading to a writing session and not really, you know, focused on what I was going to say. And I got in the car. Uh, to go there, I started just thinking about life and where I was and what I had come through. And uh, the song really details how I felt, how my, my take on growing up with my dad being an absentee father, and not, but not letting that be a sad narrative for me. Um, and so what I decided to do was be reflective of my mom, grandmother, and great-grandmother who were there. And so that song really talks about you know them and God and how God used them and put them in my life. Uh, orchestrated those sequence of events so that I, you know, had somebody there who was there for me. And so the, the title of the album is Perspective, and, and so it really is about having the perspective where one chooses to be grateful. Wow, wow. And, you know, I, I love how, like you said, the story, which I did not know, you know, the full story, the narrative behind that. Listen, you're coming out with a new project. Um, one thing that I love about um, you and your business sense, uh, we interviewed Vicky Winans not too long ago. And Vicky Winans was, if you don't, if you guys don't know, Vicky Winans does her managing, she does her Everything, booking, all yeah. of that. But one thing I love about you, Ted, you're on the writing and the publishing side of things and, and management mm-hmm. in the industry. How important is it to for artists to be on the behind the scenes and the front end of the music? Well, I think that most artists, I don't know that most artists are, are equipped to do their own business mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, actually facilitating it. And I don't even know if I think that's smart for most people. Okay. <laughs> you know, Vicky Wines is a rare animal. Yes. Uh, she's, she's, a, she's a very rare person who can do both and do them well. Um, most creative people probably need to focus on the art. Gotcha. And, but but you do need to be mindful and aware and educated on the business so you know what's going on and so, you know, quite frankly, that you're not taken advantage of. Because across genre, um, you know, whether it's gospel or country or jazz or hip-hop or R&B, it doesn't matter. A lot of people are taken advantage of or make bad decisions because they don't know. Mm. So it's vital, it's vital to your business um you know, construct and what you're doing so you can, you know, so that you can make smart decisions and you can live well off of what it is, whatever you do, um, that you're, that you're knowledgeable. It's really, it's really it kind of almost, I don't know, it's odd because it's the only industry that I know of where people don't understand the business area. <laughs> you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. if you're an actor, if you're, a, you know, an athlete, if you're a tech person, if you're a lawyer, like everybody else knows the industry and how they get paid except for songwriters. What do you think? It's very interesting. And and I know even how you were saying. What about the gospel industry? Um, and we're and we're going to get back to your new project. But the gospel industry. What do you even think of it now? Is it is it ever changing? Do, are you happy in the direction it's going? What do you think of gospel music right now? Um. Well, uh, no, I'm not happy. <laughs> uh, and I've never said this in an interview. Um, I've only said this to, to people, you know, industry people. The gospel community is is the most disjointed you know, genres I know. There's there's no mm-hmm. synergy. You know, radio kinda does its own thing. Retail's in its own world. Labels are in their own world. There's no touring infrastructure. We don't have a lot of, you know, quote unquote real managers. And so there are a lot of challenges that we face. Um, and I think that we have to continue to have honest dialogue about what we you know, what does exist and what the problems are so that we can work towards solutions to make our, our industry better. But um 
you know, we, we have a lot of we have a lot of challenges. And if you look at sales and you look at those other things, I mean, you can be on a Billboard top fifty uh, sales chart selling less than a hundred CDs a week. Yes, yes, because a lot of the people that come out number one right now, the other week was just twelve hundred were units that they sold to come out just number one. Mm-hmm. And yep. uh, we're definitely and and CD sales as a whole are down, but definitely mm-hmm. the gospel industry. Um, who are some of your your um, the newer artists? You've been doing it for a while, but who are some of the newer artists that's out that you are fans of? I I really love um, Anthony Brown Group Therapy. I really love um, the Walls Group. I, I think Travis Green is amazing. Todd nice. Delaney. Um, I mean, just some, and there's some other people, Ja'Kalen Carr, like, I'm really proud of these young people, like, I I think that they have done, and are doing music, Jonathan McReynolds, they're doing music that's, that's their own unique expression, and that's what I do miss, like, growing up, listening to music in, you know, in in the 90s, um, I just recall that, you know, and even, even music from the 80s, you know, there was one, one instance that was so unique and, and blazing in my mind, I was watching an old clip of the Grammy Awards. And the nominees for Best Female Gospel Artists were Albertina Walker, Shirley Caesar, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Tremaine Hawkins, and Sandra Crouch. And what stuck out to me was none of those women is alike. Mm. None of them. Each one of them has a, had or has a very unique expression. And my challenge for the all of the younger artists today is, you know, it sounds like cloning almost. Wow. <laughs> you know, and so it, it makes your expression not unique. And that's the thing that, you know, Lisa Page Brooks sings, she doesn't sound like anybody. Mm-mm. You know, if you hear Karen Clark sing, she doesn't sound like anybody. If you hear, you know, Richard Smallwood's music, it's very unique. Walter Hawkins' music is very unique. And that's what I love about, you know, an Anthony Brown or a Travis Green or John Jonathan Reynolds, those people, they are they have very unique, distinct expressions. And I think that we should really, you know, that that's, for, and for me, that's really a big deal. And I, and I really appreciate and celebrate that. How hard would you say it would be for artists to find their own identity um, in, in, in this industry? That's a good question. You said how hard? Yes. I, I think it's, I think it's simple if one looks inside oneself and, and does art, in a way that is unique to you. And I think what happens is with the invention of social media and kind of the you know ways that we're engaged every day with folks, I think that, I just feel like it's, 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 it's not, people aren't challenged as much to be unique because people want mm-hmm. to fit in. And so mm-hmm. when you have someone who is as, you know, a trend setting as like Kim Burrell, there are going to be some influence, and influence is one thing, right? right, right. But, you know, to, for me to not be able to tell who you are <laughs> because there's no distinction about you yeah. is not what makes art unique and beautiful. Like, a, you know, it, like a Michelangelo painting is not going to be like a Van Gogh. There are going to be very distinct differences, and I think that, you know, what I'd like to challenge your listeners to who are artistic people is to find your own expression. Right. Mm. And it may not be popular mm. right now. Yeah. Like, Richard Smallwood has... You know, amazing story that when he first was doing his music and record executives told him it wouldn't work. Mm. They actually graded his songs and gave him C's. Literally. <laughs> wow. wow. And see, I think that... So, yeah, and I, and I think that's what stands out when you hear, and like you said, you can say this is a song, this is a Ted Wynn song, this is that. And I'm mm-hmm. ex- are we expecting to get some of that on perspective? Is there um, some different sounds, some different collaborators you play, you know, you, know, you work with this time around? Yeah, I have a song I did with uh, Lisa Knowles from Memphis, which is great. I'm excited about. Oh, I'm um, doing a song with, with Bishop Hezekiah Walker, which is, you know, really cool. And then my title cut is, um, is, is, is a soul record. It's called Perspective. And it's the first time I've ever done a record like this. With, I mean, the players I use play for Prince and D'Angelo. So, I mean, I was very intentional about what I wanted sonically and the feel I wanted in this particular song. Um, because there are expressions even about myself that I've never done before. And so this is be the first time I've ever written a record, you know, and recorded a record that's that's different than what people have heard from me, whether it was inside, you know, the Ted and Sherry entity, whether it was inside Richard Smart with Vision, or whether it was my last solo record, or even stuff they've heard from this record so far. Um, and so, yeah, I, I did, I, I was, the, the range on this project is very wide. Um, because it is, you know, very intentional about it being my perspective on, you know, how I choose to do music and the different expressions that we can have inside of 
the genre we identify as gospel. And I love how you've taken your time, even with the rollout of the project, you know, before the single, and now you have a video, which you don't see too many visuals. <laughs> I've been paying attention with the rollout, you know, the pre-order, yeah. you had it playing at radio quite some time, even before the video, and then you put it on, you didn't just rush to put it out right when it came out. Um, and do we have a date for the, pro- I, I know you're doing things strategic. I've been, I've been checking. <laughs> do yeah. you have a date uh, for yeah, your project yet? Yeah. I mean, I know the album's coming next year. I don't have a, an exact date yet. And, and to your point, uh, that is that is true. And I, I just, man, I've learned so much from watching people and talking to folks over the years. And, you know, and I think that for anything you're putting out, the first thing you have to do is build a demand. Yes. Right? Because if you don't build a demand, you're going to put an album out. And you have a great first week because we can all do that. We'll have your your core fans, your family, your high school friends, your college, and everybody's going to get it. But then after that, what happens the second week? And the third mm-hmm. week, and the fourth mm-hmm. week, if you haven't built up the demand for and created an awareness across the country, you, you know you're not going to have sustainability. And so the goal for me is to build grateful. Um, and we're early on on it. And, 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 and let me say uh, publicly, thank you guys for playing the record. Um, I appreciate it. And, and we're building the record, and the songs should probably chart in the Billboard Top 30 um, next week. And so you know we'll continue to build from there. But I want to kind of you know go through the the fall. And into the winter, just because seasonally, uh, record, slower records usually perform wet better when the weather's slow. Some people don't know that, but it's real. Um, <laughs> and so we're very intentional about doing that. And I'm very excited about you know the setup. So well, I appreciate you even being aware of that. Well, we're definitely no, I've, I've definitely done my homework in that degree, and and we're definitely going to continue to play for grateful. Um, when the CD comes out, we're going to promote it. But we have a lightning round that we do before we let anybody go on the phone. It's just quick. The first four things that come to your mind on the question I'm asking. You ready? Don't be scared. Okay. It's nothing. And before we get to that, really quick, I have to ask you, I'd be remiss if I didn't, uh, when people knew you were on the line. You had a controversial interview long, uh, not too long ago on Lift Every Voice. I just want to ask you, the mm-hmm. election is, is going on. I don't, you don't have to say anybody who you're voting for, but I know if you follow you on social media, you're vocal about what's going on, what's not going on. <laughs> what do you think of the election, the climate of that? You don't, you don't have to take too much time, but what do you think about that? Uh, I, I think that the climate of the election uh, is really has really the, the tenor and tone of it has really been set by Donald Trump. I feel like the, the way he has been a politician um, has really set the tenor and tone. And, and I do push back against folks saying like, "Oh my God, this is like the worst thing ever." I'm like, "Are y'all familiar with the civil rights struggle? Yes. Like, it's not black people being holes in the street and having dogs sick on them." Right. So I don't think it's the worst thing ever. I think it's it's. We have become accustomed to a more sterile political process where people act more civil, right? Yeah. But I think that we still have real challenges in our community with, you know, mass incarceration, with systemic racism, with the marginalization of women, you know. And I just think that we have a lot of challenges that we really need to deal with, um, you know, as a country and as a people. And so I, I am, I am, you're right, I'm very vocal about it. I did do an interview on the Third Voice some years ago. That was, you know, what's interesting is that at the time it was really controversial and people, yes. you know, I got all kind of inboxes, inbox, you know, messages in my <laughs> inbox and everything, remember. you know. But now that the country has evolved and people have moved forward, people understand that you have to respect people's right to believe and live how they want to live, mm-hmm. you know. I, and, I, and I think it's so important for us to be mindful of that because I don't want anybody taking my right away to express how I want to express. If I want to pray in public or sing gospel music and have it be on radio, I want that right. And when you start telling people what they can and can't do based on your ideology, you get into a really dangerous space. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the same space that allowed for slavery and for women to be, you know, marginalized and to, mm-hmm. to be married off without needing permission, you know, or having to be happen to love the man and your father just said, this is who you're going to marry, and you, so you had to marry them. And so we have to really be mindful of that as we move forward, um, that we live in a, in, in a space well, we we um we respect everybody's right to exist. You know how they want. You exactly. ain't gotta like it. You and, know what I'm saying? And you heard you it. Gotta do it. And you heard it from him, the gospel artist. Well, the last, the four questions are just top. Whatever comes off the dome. The first thing is, there's a song you deal with writing. What's a song you've heard on the radio, big gospel, that you wish either you wrote or you sung? If you could pick one song. Yeah, probably Total Praise. Total Praise, a <laughs> big one. Uh, second question, is there going to ever be another Ted and Sherry album? Yes. 
Yes. Okay, good. Hopefully we love that. That'll make a lot of people that listen happy. A uh, third question, <laughs> who's somebody in the industry um, that maybe you're friends with that people would be surprised? You have to pick one. It always makes everybody every, think. Every time. Every time. <laughs> I guess because I'm so public about my friends. Um, I, I, that's a tough one. Edwin Hawkins? Okay, Edwin Hawkins. And the last question, uh, who's somebody that you have yet to um, collaborate with that you would love to? Oh, that's easy, Brandy. <laughs> oh, but she's wow. the best. Everybody knows me. I love Brandy. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Tia, for taking time. Uh, don't forget, you guys, Thank Grateful you. is on all digital outlets. They can also see the video on YouTube, right? Yes, it's on, it's on YouTube, it's on video, and it's on my YouTube page, so... Anywhere you can. And it's on my Facebook page. So it's all over the place. And, Check it out. And be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for his uh, project perspective coming soon. Thanks again, Ted. Thank you.